Good afternoon and welcome to a new section in information retrieval and recommender systems. Um, today we get off on some very exciting stuff and what we're going to be doing here is, is we're going to be considering models of information retrieval. And there are several of these models to consider. First of all, what I want to say um, before I continue with this, I am assuming that you've all read that you've read about stop words and stemming. And if you're all sitting there and scratching your head going, what is he talking about? Um, right on the canvas in this module. The module started off with a very short um, web page um, that you should have looked at about stop words and stemming before um, proceeding here. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I want to introduce something and I'm going to call it, first of all, information retrieval is a lot to write. I'm just going to write IR whenever I want to say information retrieval. And um, I am going to pose something. I am going to call it the, I'll even, the IR problem. And this is my own creation here. You won't see this in any book, but I think it's very important that we um, create a situation. What is it that we're exactly that we're trying to do here? And the answer is, is the following. The first thing is, is I want to assume that we have some large collection of documents. And here is our collection right here. And if we happen to be Google, and these are, these are text files, And you'll hear people talk about a corpus of text files. Corpus comes from the Latin word meaning body. Um, in this case, it just means a collection. And the question, first of all, that you may be asking is, is how many of these documents are there? And um, that entirely depends on the situation. If we're talking about Google, I believe Google at this point claims that their corpus of text files is, I don't know, 50 or 100 billion documents at this point. We might be talking about a few hundred documents. We might be talking about a few thousand documents. And over here is a curious person. Curious people always smile. They have fingers. And a curious person is trying to figure something out. So the curious person's working on a problem. The curious person needs to know something. The curious person needs to know something. Or we can even state this another way. We could say that um, there are some documents in corpus that curious person would like to see. like to say. Okay, so someplace in here there are one or more documents that this person wants to see. And we can imagine that this person um, is an Eastern Michigan University student. Um, they're taking a class in information retrieval. Um, the professor has mentioned something called stemming and Porter's algorithm. And the student's going, that's very interesting. I'd like to know something more about it. And 
maybe in here there are some documents that can answer the student's questions. So we're not quite there yet, but we're almost there. And the idea is, is the following. Curious person, and maybe I need to abbreviate it that way. Um, curious person's interest in documents is based upon the words contained in each document. Now you might be saying to yourself, isn't that obvious? And obvious? And I'm going to say, no, that's not obvious. Um, I mean, curious person might like red objects. Or a curious person might like kitty cats. But these things over here are not what are going to help curious person find the documents that we want to find in this corpus over here. In other words, what is going to happen is, is how interesting each one of these documents is to curious person is a function of the words that are contained in the document. Now, that's not to say that we can't be curious about things like this, and that is a completely different problem. That is not the scope of this class. But what we are assuming here, the big sum assumption is, is, is that the word content of a document will reflect how interested someone is in a document. Now, the other problem that we have here is, is there could be another curious person here. Okay, so there's curious person one, curious person two, and these two people may be curious in the same thing. But that is then the problem that we have is that it may not be the case that they think that the same documents are equally important. And that's something that we're going to have to talk about in here. But the point that I am trying to make is, is that this person's interest in these documents, if we could score them, okay, and maybe a higher score means that you're more interested in it, we are going to assume that that score is somehow based upon the words that are contained in these documents. So that's what I call the information retrieval problem. How do we figure out which one of these documents are interesting? Or can we do something even more clever? And can we order these documents from the most interesting ones to the least interesting ones? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this section here. Now, In doing this, we have these different models of information retrieval. And what's going to happen is this curious person sits here. And here's curious person. And now curious person is sitting by the keyboard. And there's a computer, in case you couldn't tell. And they're typing something in. And curious person is looking at something that may look a lot like Google, 
maybe it is Google, and over in here, there's a search box. And now what curious person is going to do is this curious person is going to type things in the search box. And maybe they type in one word. Maybe they type in a couple of words. Cat, dog, mouse. And what we are going to do is, again, you may remember back over here, we talked about this corpus of documents. Well, we are going to say now that there is another document here, and we're going to talk about something that's called the query document. And we will, in this class, we will denote that by DQ. And DQ in this situation would be cat, dog, mouse. It's the document that contains the word cat, dog, mouse. And what our problem is going to be is now to find documents in the corpus and let's give the corpus a name we'll call the corpus C so we need to find documents that are and I'm going to put this in quotes now similar to DQ. And when we say similar, that is to be interpreted as meaning that these would be documents that somehow we think curious person would be interested in. Now there are several different models of information retrieval that we're going to consider to answer this problem. And I will mention them right here. The first one, and we'll talk about it in this particular video, is called the Boolean model. And it's pretty simple. You'll like it. The other one, number two, is this thing that is going to use something called Jacquard's similarity. The third method is something that's going to be called the vector space model. And the fourth one, and maybe you've heard of this, is going to be something called page rank. And these four models are basically the things that we're going to talk about in this particular section. Um, we're going to knock these two off in this video right now because they go fairly quickly. They're fairly clever. Um, the vector space model, um, you may be wondering why did we spend all that time learning linear algebra and it will come back to haunt you when we talk about the vector space model. Page rank, um, you may have heard of page rank before. Um, one of the founders of Google is a guy named Larry Page. And in case you didn't know, Larry Page is from Michigan. Um, his father was actually a computer scientist, a professor of computer science at Michigan State. Larry Page did his undergraduate work at um, University of Michigan before he ran off to Stanford, where he never finished his graduate degree. But PageRank, um, some people theorize, is named after Larry Page. So with that out of the way, let's knock off these, um, these first two models very quickly. Um, the Boolean model is surprisingly So the Boolean model basically says that our query is a Boolean expression. 
So the Boolean expression basically says something like the following. It basically says, find me documents that contain dog and mouse or cheese. And we can see again that if we have our corpus C of documents over here, what we do is, is we just go through every document in the corpus and we apply the Boolean expression to see if it's true or not. So some of these are going to be true and some of them will be false. And then what we do is, is we just come over here and we return all documents that evaluate true. In other words, all documents that satisfy this Boolean expression. Now, the beauty of this, okay, the pros, very simple, easy to implement. Okay, and the con to this is, is it only gives a strict yes, no. Strict yes, no. In other words, it doesn't come back. If you think about the documents that are returned, it can't order them in any way. There, there's no way with the Boolean model of saying that one particular um, document is better than another one. You can just say it's either acceptable or it isn't acceptable. Um, so for those reasons, the Boolean model is considered fairly restrictive. But now we can do something a little bit more interesting. And we're going to have this thing called Jacquard's similarity. And here's what I want to do. I want to assume that if I have a document D sub i, and I'm going to say that's a document, then I want to talk about w of d sub i is equal to the set of words contained in di. So for example, if I had di over here, here's d1, let's say. And this contains cat, dog, dog, mouse, bird. And let's call this D1. And I come over here. And here's D2. And maybe this has cat, dog, mouse, um, I don't know, snake, pig. And I come over here, and here's D3. And let's call this, um, oh, well, I don't know, let's call this red green, blue, dog. So that if I come over here now, if I were to look at WD1, WD1 is red, green, blue, dog. 
and w of d2 is equal to, let's see, cat dog mouse snake pig and I come over here and I go with w of d3 is equal to cat, dog, mouse, bird. Okay, I hope everybody's okay with that so far. What I do is, is I talk about the similarity between two documents. So if I wanted to talk about the similarity, the similarity of D1 of D1 comma D2 is equal to the words of D1 intersect D2 over the words of D1 union D2. So let's think about that. So for example, if I come over here, and, and actually, I'm sorry, what it is, is, is we want the size of these sets. So I'll put lines over them like that. So if I come over here and I look at D1 and D2, I can see that the intersection of D1 and D2, well, the only word that I see in common with both of them, so this would be equal to the size of the set dog, I'm making a mess here, and I think my yellow disappears when I do that. Yes, it does. What am I going to do? And if I were to look at the union of these, well, the union of these is going to be red, green, blue. So it's going to be the size of red, green, blue, dog, cat, dog, cat, mouse, snake, pig, dog, cat, mouse, snake, pig, and I want the size of that. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1 over 8. So the similarity of this is 1 eighth. So basically what we're saying here is, is that these two things here are not very similar. On the other hand, if I were to look at the similarity, and let's see if I can do this. I think I can do this. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to still leave. There you go. You've got D1 and D2 there. So suppose I wanted to do the similarity. of, let's see, that would be D2 and D3. D2 and D3. Well, I'm going to come over here. I think I can, yeah, all right. Now everybody can see what's going on here. If I come over here and I look at D2 intersection D3, D2 intersection D3. Well, I see cat, dog, mouse. Cat, dog, mouse, cat, dog, mouse, snake, pig, and over here there's bird, so it's just cat, dog, mouse. D2 union D3 is equal to cat, dog, mouse.
cat, dog, mouse, snake, pig, bird, snake, pig, bird. So that again, if I am trying to do the similarity of D2 and D3, that is equal to the size of the set D2 intersection D3 over the size of D2 union D3. And the intersection, that's equal to 3. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this similarity is a half. So we can see over here, again, if we go over here, the similarity between D1 and D2 was only an eighth. The similarity between D2 and D3 is a half. So we would conclude, for example, that um, that these two, D2 and D, D2 and D1, are much more similar than D2 and D3. So, for example. Suppose that our corpus was made up of this one and this one, and this is our query over here. This is DQ. Now, what's going to happen over here is, is we would come back with a ranking. It would come back over here and it would say the similarity between this query and this document here is one half. So it would rank this higher than it would rank this one over here. So again, I just want to say, If the query with D2, which is cat, dog, mouse, snake, pig, cat, dog, mouse, snake, pig, what would get returned, if we were doing like a Google thing here, we imagine that this is our screen. It would bring back D1, and then it would bring back D3. Because this one, this one had a jacquard coefficient of one half. This had a jacquard coefficient of one eighth. Okay. So the beauty of using the jacquard coefficient, the jacquard similarity. is that the card similarity is always a number that's between 0 and 1. And of course, the closer it is to 1, the more similar the documents are. The closer it is to 0, the less similar it is. So this gives us a way of actually ranking the documents. And again, what I want you to realize, I need one more slide here. And I don't have one at my disposal, do I? Um, I'll have to make it a different size. All right, so we have this big. So I want you to imagine here. Here's document one. Here's document two, document three, all the way up to document sub n. Over here, I have some document. This is my query document. So what I do is, is I just come over here and I calculate the similarity of D1, DQ, and over here, I calculate the similarity of D2 and DQ, similarity of D3 and DQ, all the way up to the similarity of D sub n and DQ. Each one of these numbers here, these are all between 0 and 1. And what I do is, is I return these documents ordered from largest to smallest based on this similarity measure. Okay? 
that is the end of this lecture. Thank you.